In this video, we're going to explore how to create a JSON service using Java and the Java EE7 standard along with a servlet. Now, why JSON? Well, if you search my channel, you'll see that I have several videos that are based on uh, JSON. And, and to be honest, they're some of the most popular videos that I have on the channel, uh, several with, with quite a few views. So uh, a lot of them are about parsing JSON in Android. That is consuming JSON. Okay, I also have a playlist called Creating a JSON Service Using MySQL and Perl, which is a nice way to create a JSON stream, especially if you're on kind of a low budget or you have a, a, a web host that doesn't support Java. That's a great option. If you're working with Java, this video that I'm producing now is, is for you because this is going to tell us how to do it with Java. Now, there are going to be several things we need to work through, several prerequisite things, so I'm going to break this video into several parts. Part one, which is the video you're watching now, we're going to just uh, discuss what JSON is and what servlets are. We're going to create a servlet. We're going to create the doGet method. Once we create the servlet, we have to wire up the servlet to a URL, which means when the user invokes a URL, we're going to call the servlet. We do that in WebXML. Then we're going to make a very simple prototype just to make sure that our wiring up has worked, our servlet has compiled, and our servlet has created data. That will end this video. In the second video, we're actually going to do the work to create the JSON. We're going to add the Maven dependency for the JSON library, and then we are going to use dependency injection uh, to get to our existing business logic and DAO layers. These are layers that we've written in previous videos. And the nice thing about already having these layers is what we're doing is we're leveraging these layers that we've already written with a new user interface. That new user interface isn't really something a user's going to see. It's something a machine is more likely to see because that user interface is going to produce JSON. After that, we're going to create a JSON object, and then we're going to write JSON data to the output stream, uh, which is provided to us in our servlet. If we have time, we might get to a part three where we're going to include some parameters so that we can maybe filter down the JSON result that we're getting back from this JSON stream. So what is JSON? Well, it's a lightweight interchange format based on JavaScript. In other words, it's a way that we can communicate from a producer to consumer. The producer being something on the server, the consumer being something like a, an iPhone app or an Android app, mobile phone app of some type. So the JSON is very popular now because it is lightweight. Uh, it can be used in kind of Web 2.0 contexts where you need to send data very quickly without bogging down a network. So what does JSON look like? This is a live stream of some JSON data from plantplaces.com. And uh, you see, this is just kind of the, the raw data. If I control you, we can see it in a, in a more structured format. It's the same data nonetheless. But you kind of see what's going on here. We have an array called plants, and then the colon separates the name of an object or an array with its value. So, so an array called plants, and then uh, we know it's an array because we have the square bracket that follows the colon, and that says, okay, what follows this is some uh, structured data. Now, within the plants array, we have, uh, we have objects, and each of these curlies represents an object. Within an object, we have name value pairs. You'll see ID, genus, species, cultivar, common, and that pattern repeats in each of these objects that follow. So in other words, Every one of these uh, objects that follows here, every one of these lines from two going forward, represents a different plant. So our goal is to create this with Java's, you know, in a, in a quick and easy format. So um, basically with JSON, we're going to have a series of types, string, number, we looked at array and object, and then true, false, and null. Uh, so we're going to quickly take our existing database from our virtual machine, and we're going to create a JSON stream out of it. Now, if you're just joining this video and you haven't seen it, I'll encourage you to take a look at the Enterprise Web playlist that I have. That's what builds up this entire application. So we already have data. Uh, we already have a DAO layer. We already have a business logic layer as well. What we're doing now is we're going to create a servlet, 
that's going to serve up JSON based on our existing structure. So a servlet is kind of like a, a user interface. Uh, it's kind of like a user interface concept that's going to leverage our existing DAO and business object, business uh, logic layers. It kind of gives some validation to our approach that we've had in building our application in layers. So in other words, our application to this point has, as we know, it already has the, the DAO and the, the data access layer, in other words, and the business logic layer, and it already has a presentation. So the presentation is something that we're going to look at. And uh, of course, I have the server down at the moment, but we'll bring it up and that's something we're going to look at where a, a servlet that's producing JSON really isn't something a human's going to read. It's, it's more going to be something that's machine readable, but it's still going to leverage our existing business logic and persistence layers. So the servlet acts as another UI layer. OK, so what is a servlet anyway and, and why are we using a servlet with JSON? Well, a servlet was one of the first iterations of Java on the web. A servlet was a Java program that would write HTML. Uh, and the trick is, it's not easy when you have that. It's not easy to uh, change the look and feel. You know, you, you kind of have someone who does design and someone else who does programming. But in this case, all of the hands are together in one, in one class. And so that's not really pretty. So we went from servlets to JSPs, which were more like HTML pages with injected Java logic, then from JSPs to JFS, J, uh, JSF, and then we get our libraries added on like uh, prime faces, which we're using in this application. So that's why the UI has gone to more of a JSF and prime faces application. So we can have that separation between business logic and presentation. But for JSON, a servlet is ideal because this is just a Java class that's going to write some kind of output, could be XML, HTML, text, or JSON. We're not worried about presentation because we're simply showing data. So let's start by making a servlet. And believe it or not, uh, well, this is the first time I've talked about servlets. This is not the first time you've made a servlet, or this is not the first time that you have used a servlet in your application. So let's start. I'm going to go to uh, our application, Java Resources, and I'm going to go to UI, because remember, a servlet is really a UI concept. I'm going to right-click and say New, and then I'm going to say Class, and I'm going to say, uh, let's say, um, we want to show maybe plants or specimens. Let's start with plants. So I'm going to say Plant JSON, Servlet. I really don't have to put the word servlet there, but why not? And now this is important. We want it to extend HTTP servlet. And I'm going to choose browse and make sure that I select the right one. Uh, that looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, that'll work. I just want to make sure I don't want the one below. That's, that's good enough for us. So I'll go ahead and choose finish. Okay. And now we have this uh, plant JSON servlet extends HTTP servlet. Okay, a couple things we're going to need to do here. First, I'll control M so we can see this in high definition. Next, we want to use, in our case, the get method. So there are two ways that we can request some, well, actually, there are several ways we can request something from the web. Uh, get put, post, trace, options, delete. Uh, the two that are most common, though, are get and post. Get means we're going to see a query string in the URL, like you see here. So this thing that follows the question mark is the query string. That would be a get method. Post is something like when you log on to your online banking uh, and you don't want your username and password to be in plain text in the URL. Uh, so we can explore post later, but for the moment, we're going to use get. Now, What's going to happen when we wire up the servlet and we invoke it with a get method? It's going to invoke a method on the servlet called do get. In other words, when we call the servlet with the URL and a query string that follows in the URL, that's going to be a get request. And it's going to invoke a method called do get. So we need to override this method do get. Let's let Eclipse do some work for us. We're going to start typing D-O-G-E and then hold control and hit space. And sure enough, we want to override the method do get. One thing though, let's make it public access. 
And we don't need to call super, probably not going to hurt anything, but we don't need to call super. So this is going to get invoked when we invoke the servlet. We still need to wire up the servlet to our website. We'll do that in just a moment. Okay, you'll see there's a response. So I'm going to say RESP. This response object represents what we're returning to the browser when the servlet is invoked. So I'm going to say RESP, and I'm going to say set uh, content type. Okay, content type is going to be application. And then on an American keyboard, the slash on the question mark key, and then JSON. Okay, uh, so this is what type of data are we sending back? Plain text, XML, HTML, or in this case, JSON. Next, we need to get an access to a writer or an output stream that's going to print our content out to the browser. So I'm going to say RESP, and I'm going to say get uh, writer. That'll work. Okay, uh, control one on the method and assign to new local variable. Print writer is fine. Okay, and now I'm going to say writer and let's say dot print ln. Okay, and we'll just say for the moment foo. We just want to test and make sure that this works. Writer dot um, flush. Say okay. Uh, go ahead and send that down, and then writer.close means we're finished with this connection. Let's go ahead and close it and send everything down to the browser. Okay, so a quick and dirty servlet. That's all we have right now. I'm going to save. We need to map this servlet in our web XML. So I'm going to put my cursor on plant JSON service. Uh, I'm going to go to edit and then copy qualified name. That's going to quality. That's going to copy into my clipboard the package name and also the servlet name. So I grab that and I control M and I'm going to look for our web XML. Uh, actually, control shift R would probably work better. I could find it quicker that way, but nonetheless, uh, web INF and then web XML. Okay, now what we need to do here. Yeah, I'm going to control M this again. What we need to do here is we need to say, hey, when the user accesses a URL with this pattern, send them to the servlet that I've just written. And we're going to use that with a servlet and servlet mapping tag, which we did a long time ago when we wired up uh, faces, JSF, to our application. We basically said, okay, anything that hits this URL this directory, or has the .xhtml extension, we're going to pass this to the faces servlet, which is going to kick off that whole JSF working. So uh, what I'm going to do, just for the moment, I'm going, to I'm going to paste that fully qualified name that I just copied. And now I'm going to duplicate this faces servlet and servlet mapping, and I'm going to borrow a little logic there. So control C and control V. Okay, now we have to give it a unique name. But first, let's take care of this fully qualified class name for our servlet. That's the value that belongs in servlet class. Again, should be fully qualified, and by that I mean package name dot class name. Okay, now we need to give the servlet a unique name. We don't want to duplicate that because it's going to confuse with our faces servlet. So let's say plant json servlet doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the class name but what the heck let's just do the same thing with spaces at this point the servlet tag that you see here that family that's good we just need to do the mapping so the mapping says okay when i receive a url of this pattern i want to direct it uh, to this faces or in this case i want to direct it when i see a url of this pattern I want to direct it to this servlet, and this servlet is going to be handled by this class. So again, we don't want to reuse the same pattern, the same URL pattern that we're using for faces. Let's give this a brand new URL pattern. I'm just going to say, uh, let's say plants. We'll say slash plants. Something like that will work, and then save. So I'm saying when we go to plantplaces.com, or in this case, localhost8080 slash plantplaces, slash plants, that's the important part. It's going to come to this servlet mapping. The servlet mapping is going to redirect it to this servlet. The servlet is defined up here, and that servlet is consumed 
by this class. So let me tidy up a little bit and then we'll save and deploy. Okay, save. I'm going to deploy and uh, I'm going to pause the video for a moment while I deploy and then I'll unpause it once it's deployed. Just a moment. Now the server's restarted and so you can see that we have a uh, our normal look and feel that we've been dealing with all, all uh, through this uh, through the sequence. But watch this. Let me go ahead and put in that URL pattern that we've defined in our WebXML. Remember, it's simply slash plants, which means, okay, uh, go to our plantplaces.com application and then simply add that slash plants afterward. So let's go ahead and add that slash plants and see what we look like. And sure enough, we get just the data foo, but that's fine. That's what we want. We simply want to prove out the concept that we uh, can get uh, that we can get uh, uh, some data out to the page. So, okay, at this point, the video is getting on to 15 minutes, which uh, I don't like to make videos that get terribly long. Let me cut this into two parts. This part is the servlet, and the next part, we're going to look at the construction of the JSON from our data source. So I'll see you then.